Hi folks, Ryan Malloy here, Managing Editor of TheSeniorList.com, and today we're taking a closer look at the Iris Easy Flip from Consumer Cellular. So if you want to buy a simple flip phone from Consumer Cellular, then the Iris Easy Flip is currently your only option. With its simple controls, low price, and not one but two large screens, it's definitely worth a look. But that said, this phone lacks voice commands and app functionality that have become commonplace on other simple flip phones. So depending on the user, this phone might in fact be too simple. Before we dive into this review, I'd like to remind you to hit the subscribe button below. And if you wanna read our full list of the best phones for seniors, click the links in the description. All right, let's get into it. So the Iris Easy Flip is pretty standard in terms of flip phone display. On the front, you'll find its large 2.8 inch screen that displays the date, the time, and any notifications. On the side of the phone, you'll find the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, as well as the volume rocker. The volume rocker can also be used while the phone is closed, which I think is pretty neat. On the other side of the phone, you'll find the USB-C port for charging, as well as a dedicated camera button. The camera can also be used while the phone is closed. Not the best angle, but you know, we'll take a photo. When you open the phone, you'll find another 2.8 inch screen. Beneath it, you'll find the phone's large backlit keypad. These soft keys will open notifications and messages, respectfully. You've also got your call and end buttons, as well as dedicated buttons for your favorite contacts, speaker, and clear. It kind of functions just like a back button, getting you back to whatever screen you were on. Overall, I'd say design is pretty good. While plastic, the device feels substantial in your hand, and flicking it open feels sturdy, and each of the keys has a satisfying tactile sensation. My only gripe would be with the external screen. While I do appreciate that it's large, making it easier to view notifications or incoming calls, I can't help but wish that maybe there was some sort of touch functionality here. This could make it a lot easier to potentially open and respond to text messages or even respond to calls without having to open the phone. The interface of the Iris Flip is pretty limited, and I imagine for most users, that's really part of the appeal. The home screen displays the date, the time, the Wi-Fi and cellular signals, and the battery life. To make a call, you can start dialing a number, or you can jump to your contacts, or you can even go to your favorite contacts and choose one that way. In all of my test calls, the audio came in clearly on both ends. This phone is also rated M4T4 in terms of hearing aid compatibility. And when I use this phone with hearing aids, I noticed there was no audio interference. So good looks there. The only issue I had with this phone was that during a call, the speaker button didn't actually do anything. Instead, I had to press the OK button to turn the speakerphone on and off. Not really a huge issue, but I thought I'd mention it. Texting I found to be a particularly painful experience on the Iris Easy Flip. While the messaging interface was sleek and visually appealing, there was no option for voice-to-text capabilities. Instead, you'll have to manually type out every message on the 12-digit keypad. On the plus side, I did find that KT9 predictive text was a bit useful, but it was still much more cumbersome than voice-to-text. In terms of apps, the Iris Easy Flip is a bit more limited than similar devices. You'll find no support for any type of app store, meaning that you're pretty much stuck with what's already on the phone. This includes a voice recorder, a basic music app, a clock, a calculator, and an FM radio. There's also an internet browser app. However, I found that the internet browser was incredibly cumbersome to use. First, there's a the KT9 typing. Need I say more? Then you'll need to slowly move your cursor with the directional pad. And then you'll also have to consider that most websites are not optimized for a screen of this size. So apart from the occasional Google search, which can be accomplished, I guess, I don't really see the internet browser being all that useful here. I would say the same thing about this phone's calendar app. While I appreciate that the app is here, the clunky way in which you have to input text and how difficult it is to navigate from one input box to the other makes it really not worth your while to actually enter in calendar events at all. But then again, if someone is purchasing this phone, I kind of assume that they're not going to rely on it to keep track of appointments. They probably have a physical calendar for that. The Iris Easy Flip has one 5 megapixel camera. However, in a feat of flip phone engineering, this one camera can be used for both front facing photos and selfies. Overall, I found the camera quality to be about what you would expect from a 5 megapixel flip phone camera. Colors are inaccurate, lacking nuance, and usually pretty dark, especially when taken inside. 
videos are pretty grainy and taken at a low frame rate, and the phone also didn't appear to even support sending videos, which is maybe disappointing depending on how you look at it. There's also no LED flash here, so good luck taking any photos in the dark. So overall, if you were expecting the Easy Flip to be a leap forward in terms of flip phone cameras, then you might be disappointed. But if you only plan to take the occasional photo and have no desire to post these photos online or print them, then this phone might suffice. So prior to the Iris Easy Flip, there was the Iris Flip. And while the two phones are nearly identical in terms of size, design, and camera quality, there are a couple key differences I'd like to highlight. First is voice to text. As I mentioned, with the Easy Flip, you have to painstakingly type out each character, but with the Iris Flip, you can use your voice, like so. How are you doing? For those who are heavy texters, this would be super useful. You can also use voice to text when conducting Google searches, like so. Who is Kamala Harris? The Iris Flip also has native apps for YouTube and Google Maps. While these are both a bit more clunky to use than they would be on a smartphone, I appreciate that they're here and they could come in handy in a pinch. In terms of battery life, camera quality, and all other specs, both devices are pretty similar. So if voice to text and YouTube accessibility are important to you, I think the Iris Flip is a much better option. Consumer Cellular is no longer selling the device directly, but some other retailers are. Like currently it's on sale for $50 at Target. So just something to consider. So overall, the Iris Easy Flip is incredibly affordable, costing a one-time $59. Plans with Consumer Cellular are also budget-friendly, starting at $20 per month for unlimited talk, unlimited texts, and one gigabyte of data. But let's be real, you won't really be using much data with this phone. The design is also incredibly simple, so if you've ever used a flip phone, this one will be familiar. And I also appreciate the battery life on this thing. It gave us six hours of talk time and nearly two weeks on standby. In terms of the negatives, we have the Iris Easy Flip's camera. It is what it is. But more importantly, I really wish that there were voice to text capabilities here. While I can overlook app functionality, after all, who's doing online shopping or browsing Facebook from a flip phone, I really wish there was some way to dictate text or utilize a voice assistant. When it comes to flip phones, this makes them so much easier to use. If you want a flip phone with this type of functionality, then I'd recommend the Iris Flip. But if you only need a phone for talk, the occasional text, an occasional grainy photo, then the Iris Flip is an affordable option. If you want to watch my full review of the Iris Flip, click here. And if you want to see our full list of this year's best phones for seniors, click the links in the description. Until next time, I'm Ryan Malloy with TheSeniorList.com, helping you age in place. See ya!